Hello and welcome to the Dad Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Richie Leahy. Today, I'll admit it's kind of a cop-out. When I first did the essential items list for new dads, I started it without an end in sight. Well, after a while, I decided to write out my list. And at first, I wasn't going to put items like this on it because I wanted it to be kind of uh, like a funny list of like what dads could carry. Well, after I discussed and had some feedback from some listeners, I decided I have to put items like this on the list. So my last two items are going to be ones that are basically essential. So you're going to vote them up or down. Uh, some of the other, other, other items on the list are good. They're great. They're ones that you need. As a dad, um, I kind of changed it to items for new parents halfway through, uh, because a lot, let's be honest, most of my listeners are female, they're moms. So I was surprised. I thought it would be a thing for dads to find and not so true. Girls kind of think it, I don't know if they think it's funny, uh, but I usually have like a dry humor anyway. Uh, so the item on this list after some fan feedback, actually not, I don't want to say fans, listeners, because it's not to get fame. It's to get knowledge across and kind of use it as a way for me to vent and get uh, some skills just to force me to do some research before the show and learn a bit as a dad, which I'll get into after we finish our last two items. Without further ado, the item on this list for this week, the most essential item list for new parents is car seats. Now you might think, I don't have a car, so these aren't essential for me. But a car seat is something that you need as a parent. Let's say, I mean, even if you don't have a car, there's a time where you might have to Uber or take a taxi and they have different ones that fit. So I'm gonna kinda talk about it and it's gonna go with the next item on our list, which is next episode, it's gonna be strollers, which you know if you look at it. So I wanted to kinda tie this in both episodes are going to kind of intertwine. So the last two items, they're unique because most people would assume that these are essential items. I could have did like monkey backpacks or whatever those are that have like, they're the backpack your kid wears. It's like a leash. But of course, no, these need to talk about people finding the show. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback on the developmental charts. It's something that I mean, even though it's a little bit short, that's why I want to probably going to add an intro podcast just to kind of talk about the show. So if people stumble upon it, they can hear what the show is about as I learned with it and see that they can jump around. Uh, But the car seat to talk about, uh, it's useful and parents are going to want that information. So if you just stumble the show and you're just looking for the car seat, I'm going to do this one a little bit different than the other items on our list. I'm going to explain the car seats and how to get them. Well, we got a car seat that went with a, it's called Click Connect and it's by, I think, Graco. A couple of different companies make them. Make your own decision. Do your research. I researched for a very long time before I made the decision. So we got one that was infant only. And basically it came with a stroller and it came with the connect pad. So the connect pad goes into your car and you use it with the seatbelt or they have a latch system. What the latch system is, it's a seatbelt that is hardwired into the seat. So normally in the back seat, well, you wanna put your kid probably in the middle of the vehicle just because if there's a side impact, you don't wanna get them hit. I think studies show that the driver usually protects their side. So if you can't put them there, you want to put them directly behind you. Although some people say that they can't see their kid then. But it's going to be something where talk to the police, read the manual of your car, find out where the safest spot is. Everything's going to be different. Don't listen to just where I say to put them. But we put ours in the middle to protect from side impacts. I don't reach back anyway when I'm driving. I'm 100% focused on the road because... My daughter's in the car. So don't reach back and play with your kids. I see parents doing it or handing them stuff. Focus on the road because that's your kid you're putting at risk. But anyway, 
So my, I have a truck and the back seat has little metal prongs that come out that the click connect comes with a belt. It's called like the latch system. They're metal clips that clip into that. Now a lot of cars, newer cars have these because it's like an extra way, instead of just having the seat belt from the car go into the, uh, the car seat, you have this mat latch system which is supposed to be a little more rugged, a little more safer, a little bit harder to break than using, I mean anything, if you're using a used car, the seat belt could be worn, you don't know what happened, maybe they used it to strap down something, it frayed a little bit. Well the latch system is kind of a way to make sure that you're using a new belt and a new latch with it. Also with our system we were able to buy another base. Perfect. That way one base can go in my wife's car, one can go in my, my truck, and we don't have to buy another car seat, one to keep in each car. So this is the system I use and I'm going to kind of explain how our daughter grew with them. So I know the other episodes have been shorter, about 10, 15 minutes as we change the, well that's always been the format is around 10, 15 minutes, but this one might go longer, I don't know, it might be the same. It depends on how much, I wanna get the information across, that's more important to me. So, with that car seat, you can also use it without a base, and that's why it's important if you are, if you don't even own a car, it's good to have one just in case of an emergency. Maybe your child start, stops breathing, do, do you really want to call 911 and wait for an ambulance if the response time is 15 minutes? And that's average, something I've heard. But it depends on your area. So don't just go by what I've heard the average for my area is. When you could run to your neighbor, pound on their door and say, I need to get my kid, he's not breathing, can you drive me to the hospital if you don't have a car? And that's if you live in a city or whatever or anything. Call an, uh, you're not gonna call an Uber or an emergency. But let's say something happens and you need to get to a doctor's appointment. Call an Uber. They're not going to have a car seat, probably. But if you bring your own and strap it in, then it's good. So this works for that. It's not as, well, it's not supposed to be, I mean, I guess it is as safe. But the they prefer you to use the uh, dock. But of course, unless, you're not going to carry the dock with you. So if you're traveling in someone else's vehicle, you can just use a car seat. I know we've had people do that. Like if they were taking our daughter out, if they were going with a friend, and they're like, hey, or a family member, and they say, hey, can we take a daughter for the day? Yeah, just buckle in the seat, the car seat, and then you can pass it to the next family member or whatever, and then that way we don't have to worry about exchanging the base. So have we used it without the base? Yes, very rarely, 10 times at most, most likely under five. The base is always in one of our cars. I always drive, so our daughter's rid with me probably 90% of her life in my truck. So that's our first car seat. Infinite faces rear, so you can't see your child. The police will tell you, everyone will probably tell you, don't get a mirror. Because if there's an accident, the mirror's gonna fly off the back seat and hit your kid in the face. They can't stop you. Some of them do have like higher belts. Uh, we did have one, I'll admit it. It wasn't that big and we don't use, obviously we don't use it anymore, so Used it for a while on long trips. It also played music. But for like short stop and go traffic in the city, I, I didn't like having it up. Sometimes we'd take it down or whatever. So that's another thing. Child's facing in the rear. You can't see them. I have had to stop because of, of coughing or it sounded like choking sounds in the back seat, biting something. It was like a, at one time she spit up something that looked like a sticker. It was after the doctors. I don't know if she had, like if we... Like she, we gave her the sticker and she ate it and there was actually two on there because we took it back. And like we, we knew we had the sticker so I don't know what she actually had. But she got something. And choked. I had to stop on the side of the highway. So you do have to pay attention. So don't be blasting music or whatever. I take it for a time. Sometimes you play. I Like I don't play only kids music. I play a variety of things. Mostly adult music. I don't like how people dumb things down and do only kid stuff for their kids. They're gonna learn better vocabulary if they hear real vocabulary instead of just hearing kids' songs all the time. Do they have a place? Yes, while you're learning or actively playing with your kid, I think. But besides that, that's the first car seat. 
I think, depends on your model, look at it. It will give you a range, a weight range or a height range that you can use. The rear facing seat is the safest seat for your child. So keep them rear facing as long as possible. Okay, that's our first car seat. We used it now because we're planning on having, hopefully if, if we're able to have multiple kids, we went ahead and used, was it baby shower money or something? We, we got the next, so we got three car seats total right now. The next car seat was a rear facing to forward facing transforming seat. So this one had a crossover range. I think the first car seat actually went to 45 pounds. Actually, it is in my room. Let me get up and look and see. Oh, it's 30. So that's what I thought. So the first one was 30. I was right originally. And it crosses over with the second car seat. Second car seat goes from, I think it's 20 something. That one's actually in use. So I don't know, I think it might be 25. Maybe it's 20. I don't know. But you have to go by the height range and the weight range. You want to make sure your child fits in that range for the seat. Don't stretch them because if they're too big on a rear facing, you don't want them to whip their head back or, and hit the plastic bar or miss the car seat and give themselves whiplash or anything, especially at a young age. It's going to affect them their whole life. So the second car seat we had was, like I said, it's a transformer. So you put it, they're rear facing. Our daughter used that for a while. She used it. Uh, we had it just because after a while you can put that one in my truck. I don't have to worry about carrying her. Once she got too heavy, you're not going to carry her in the infant car seat and from the house and put her in the car. We, only, we would have to put the car seat in the base and then have her climb in. So I figured, eh, I don't need to be taking the car seat out of my truck if I'm at work all day. So we'll just put the second one in my truck. So we had that one in my truck and it stayed in my truck. And this car seat was pretty much a pretty solid deal, if I'm being honest. So it turns into a forward facing one and it has good overlap. So if you do have other kids, the weight range usually goes up to whatever, 70 something pounds, 80 something pounds, and it's forward facing and, and it adjusts so that your child can sit up and face forward. So this is kind of like the in-between car seat. Now, and our, so like if we stretch out our kids, just to give some background, so there's one every two years, basically each kid would be in a separate car seat at different times. So we wouldn't have to have two of the same car seat. That's the idea of having three car seats. Now, the one we haven't used yet is called, it's like a three-in-one booster seat. Now, it also has the overlap, and the difference between this one is it's not rear facing. So rear facing is the safest. So we got one, we got the middle one just to keep our daughter facing rear faced as long as possible. We could have just got two car seats. Got the one, the click connect one, because it goes up to 30. Put her in the forward facing one because I have the box here, because we haven't used it yet. 22 pounds up to 120 pounds, and it turns into a booster seat. So we could have got away with doing that. Went to a safety stop to get trained by the police, had them check out my truck. They recommended her staying rear facing. And like I said, we, had, we already went and got that one. So we had a tw an in-between car seat and it worked out well. So now we have three car seats. Like I said, the benefit of that is the longer your kid uses a car seat, the weaker it gets. So by having the rear facing one in between, we didn't get as much wear and tear on the infant one. So if we do have another kid, if we're blessed with that, our, I feel confident that the infant car seat was never in an accident, nothing like that, that the integrity would still be there. And we have a stroller that it clicks into. I think you can get a replacement stroller if the stroller starts to get worn or whatever. Uh, but we'll bring in strollers next week, I'll talk about those. But that's our car seats. So you go from a rear facing infant one it, it's like a bucket, a basket that you can take out of your car and carry your child with. So you don't need an infant carrier. That's what the Click Connect system is. Worked out pretty well for us. Some people are afraid to do that. They would rather have the car seat permanently strapped in and then carry another infant carrier. 
do whatever you feel comfortable with. Next one, the rear facing two forward facing transformable car seat. That one is for when your kid is not yet quite a toddler, they're still in the infant stage, but they might be heavier, starting to move, get some muscle mass, they grew out of the infant car seat, too heavy to carry them in an infant carrier. They can kind of crawl around so you can have them crawl into the car seat to help you out. Perfect. It switches back to forward facing and it's still snug. It's much snugger than the other one that we have that's the full transformable car seat. And it actually has a different angle too because I've taken them out and looked at them. Where the full 22 to 120 booster one, it's kind of like a flat seat. This one still cradles them in. So if you're taking long trips, the middle one definitely helps for sleeping. If you're on a budget though, you don't need to get it. But like I said, I was worried that I mean, as a little as my daughter, I didn't want her to be in a car accident when she weighed 22 pounds and have her head go flying forward. So it's it was mine. It was to me is worth the money, even though we didn't have an accident with her. Um, so it was worth the risk, or yeah, whatever. It was worth the the investment was worth uh, trying to protect her life as she was younger and I knew her neck muscles weren't yet developed. And then the third one is the full frontal car seat. It does have like the shoulder harnesses that holds them. They don't recommend it because if there's an accident, the head goes forward and there's nothing, nothing to protect it. When they're rear facing, their head doesn't, doesn't snap like forward or back causing whiplash or any damage to their neck or their brain or anything. Well, I mean, there could still be because it's an accident, but it helps protect them a lot better, especially because they don't have the muscles to protect your neck from facing forward. Well, this one is whenever your child does have that neck muscle facing forward, it does click off, the back does, so then you can go ahead and just have the booster. And if you have multiple kids and the, a couple of them are in a booster at the same time, the booster is the cheapest part. That is literally just a seat to make sure that the strap, the shoulder strap of the car seat goes along their shoulder and not up against their neck. So that's what that's for. And the booster, just make sure that the seatbelt fits them properly, your regular car seatbelt. So there's no like latch system or anything for that. But we're not there yet. I'm not using that. We're still using the full car seat. Make sure, uh, I think a lot of stores let you go in and test the car seat to make sure it fits in your car. I have a, like I said, I have a big Ford F-150. All the car seats fit. We can have multiple kids in there. We made sure of it. Different car seats at different times though. Like I did notice that, is it the forward facing one or the rear facing one? Cause of course we got it. I have it had it out, like I said, but it's just not used yet to test and make sure that everything was there whenever we got it with the baby shower money. But one of them was wider a little bit. So it would cause a little snugness between two separate car seats in my car. But an infant carrier one, definitely not. And by the time, if we have another child, our daughter will be like two or three. So she may be up to a backless booster or some other alternative car seat that will give us more room. Uh, but that's it. I went probably a little bit longer than normal because car seats are important. I put them on the list. Again, I'm not giving advice on brands. I'm not telling you what style. Just giving you some general overview information. Please do as much research as possible on the subject. Don't just go by, okay, he said get an infant carrier or whatever, or get a Click Connect. I mean, I think that might even be just a brand name. So you can't just search for that. But it's a system that lets you plug it into your stroller and not. Next week, I'm talking about it a little bit more because I'm carrying over into strollers. That's the next item next week. And that will finish out our list of essential items for new parents. So go to ranker.com, type in dad strength, and vote up and down items on our list as we're making the an essential items list for new parents. Car seats were the item this week. I went through and just gave an overview. Again, do your research. Go see uh, the police in your town or fire company or someone that does safety checks. Have them check you out. Make sure everything is good to go. Safety is most important in a car. They're dangerous. So please, please do your research. 
Thanks for listening. I'm your host, Richie Leahy. Follow me on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and I'll see you next week.